listen, you know, I'm up at the Married with Chitlins Farms. He's my brother Chris over there. He's a farmer, musician, artist. His wife's an artist. She owns a framing shop and a, an art shop up here in Phippsburg. But we're up in Wiscasset right now. But we're going to be building some birdhouses, guys, because that's what they do. Liz is a birder as well. You know, we got some beautiful wood, downy woodpeckers over here right now on the, on the feeders that she has, which is kind of cool. I'll see how close we can get before they fly away. I don't know if you can see that little downy. There he goes. We're gonna go into the woods. I'm gonna pick up some sticks. Then we're gonna go over a junk pile and we're gonna build up a, ourselves a, a junk uh, birdhouse. And then these are a couple right here that Chris and Liz have been refurbishing from times of old. Here's one right here. Just took that out of the vise. So, hey, let's go take a walk. All right, so as you can see, we're out on a nice big old farm. Lots of chickens running around, lots of little chicken hen babies inside the house. Oh, dude, 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 I got a feather. <laughs> Rock and roll, baby, check that out. Oh, yeah, all right, that's gonna be, that's a sign. That's a clear, that's a clear sign right there. I just need a bunch of sticks. And you, we'll see what we're gonna do with them. I'm not gonna think too much. I'm just gonna grab a bunch of sticks. Not, won't spend too much time here in the... Get some firewood for the pizza oven tonight too. Looks like a nice old nasty pizza right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more than enough, bro, for what I need. Dry, dry. All right. All right. So here we go. So I got a bunch of sticks. I got a feather. Good luck. All right. So. So, anyways, man, I hope some of you guys watched my how to carve a dried mushroom. Um, that was a pretty good video. Short. It's only eight minutes long. And I uh, sent out an assignment for you guys, so hopefully you take me up on that one. All right, hey, I'm going to lay these down over here. I set up a little bench area right here. Put those over right there. Let's go get the feather down there. All right, hey, let's go check out the wood pile. <laughs> this is all from teardowns, upcycling. Oh, that's nice. See, that's a nice board right there. We can cut that up. A couple sides. By the bank. Oh, sweet, nice, nice texture, color. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, check that out. Got some cool little nails in it. We'll leave those there. Well, maybe we'll tie some cool little branches around that or something. Yeah, this ought to get us up and running. See, the whole thing here is we're not making art for museums. We're just making art for ourselves. So, um, good craftsmanship. Put craftsmanship into anything that sort of validates your intention. So it doesn't really matter how artistic you are. It's just like, put your quality of yourself into it. Put some craftsmanship into it. All right, so hey, I got some boards. I got some stuff, I got some tools. I'm gonna set this thing up and I'll, um, we'll be back soon. All right. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, listen, I'm about to get ready to build a birdhouse. And I showed you some of these before, but we'll, we'll get a closer look now that I'm not on a wandering camera. Check this out. This is a nice refurbished old birdhouse that my brother and his wife work on. And it's all out of old barn board. Got some chickens over here. This is a beauty, right? That's a beauty, isn't it? So what I did, you know, I went out into the woods, got some got some sticks and stuff, and then uh, went over to the wood pile and I picked up a nice couple of nice pieces of wood. I got in a big one over here, I gotta cut down. Was I was lucky enough to get both these at the same width, which is really going to help for my, my uh, quickness and ease. So, you know, like I was saying earlier, what I want you to think about is, you know, we're not dealing with the art in the art museum world anymore. What we're doing is we're really becoming practical with our art, you know, and I think, uh, listen to that. you know, the origins of making things was, was utilitarian, right? It's kind of why I was interested in the craft movement always, because there's something about purposeful making. So, you know, Liz uh, is a birder herself musician, farmer, so it's real important to be a good steward. So uh, over on Bearskin Neck where I live, we don't have a whole lot of trees and stuff and I get a lot of birds and different birds coming in and, and they nest in the sides of the buildings. They dig holes in the buildings where the shingles fall down. So what I was hoping to do is I'm going to build a birdhouse for the Bearskin Neck and uh, that way, because I do have some birds who penetrate in my walls. So uh, I think if I build a, a, a nice structure for them, they'll be less likely to be a nuisance to the structure of the building. Where Some of the places where they're going are kind of near where my electrical outlets are, and I don't want any problems with that. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is also, because we have no trees and stuff, that's barren around there. When I went out into the woods, I got a bunch of these sticks. So I'm going to use what's called mold. I'm going to do like do a molding thing. So after I construct the the, the volume, so to speak, um, in art terms, right? I'm going to, uh, you know, go with some vertical wood pieces. I'm going to, and uh, natural objects. That way when it's in on the bearskin neck on the side of my house, and it feels a little bit more camouflaged. It'll probably be a little bit more inviting for the birds to come in and nest in because they'll feel a little bit more protected, right? Um, might even be kind of neat to uh, put it where one of my my, uh, my honeysuckles are that are growing up. But that way they can also feel a little bit more of the camouflage, which they do like. All right, so hey, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark out this board at the heights I need. I hope this says okay. It's nice and rusty. So I'm not going to bother using my tape measure right now only because I don't really need to like this always let the saw do the work let gravity be your force and use the whole of the tool ah you musicians out there sample that sound huh sounds like larry from the three stooges now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the hot glue guns to uh just as captain bob would say fix a fast things. there we go Keep that for the roof. Um, we we'll use what my dad would call a hammer, which is the back of any tool. <laughs> the back of any tool is a hammer. Don't do that with your dad's good tools and your mom's good tools. So, I'm just going to run a bead of glue right here because I'm only going to tag this with glue temporarily or I should say initially and then once this is all glued together I'm just gonna peg it with I'm gonna drill a couple bunch of holes in it and I'm gonna peg the whole thing together so we'll let that glue is that dry like I said these glue sticks can burn you so you got to be careful let's get the nail sticking out I like that yeah so that's two All right, so we're just going to let that glue for a second, you know. Oh, my brother Chris built a, a oven out here out of brick, made a sprung arch kiln. We're going to cook some pizza in it later on tonight. But we got to burn down these coals, right, so we can get right, the pizza, so the pizza cold. can be raked down. We got to rake down yeah. these coals before we do the pizza, right? So what we got to do is we got to rush this flame up. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be closing this door, right? Watch this. If I close up this door, right? See? Now that's blocked off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to release this valve. Well, look at that. Whoa. Look at that. Whoa. Now we got the draft. So what we're going to do is we're burning down these coals big time. Whoa. Right? We got the nice super draft coming in. There's no more smoke in the kiln because we don't want the piece to be too smoky. But now check that out. That's just going to rush down, turn into nice coals. We rake those out. We slide the pizza in and we're golden that's the way this whole thing's supposed to work so that's the way it works yeah that's the way it works wow. a sprung arch is the way they build a lot of the kilns um, around the world quite honestly you have to have a keystone what's really cool is um, in Japan right there's this kiln that's called the Anagama kiln it's called a climbing kiln and what they do is it goes up the hill in series of chambers. And what you'll do is you'll load the chambers from the top to bottom. And as you come out, each when you fire it up, each of the of the chambers is the preheat for the next chamber. So they might use a you know bunch of chambers that go all the way up the mountain, and they use the draft of the natural draft of the of the mountain to carry the wind and the heat through the kiln. It's called an Anagama kiln. It's a really interesting thing. And they use sprung arches oftentimes because that way the water will, I mean the uh, air will flow smoothly through. And all right, so now we're just going to hot glue this one on here. But we're going to peg all this together later on with dowels, so I'm not too worried. I just got to get it to stick enough. Yeah, there we go. Now, you guys know what a folk artist is? I'm not even too sure of the definition, but like the Webster dictionary, dictionary definition, but I've always understood it as kind of a, a homemade approach to making stuff 
by people who aren't necessarily trained in the arts. I put it that way. Um, it's associated a lot with the rural community. It's funny, my dad, I always, a lot of people call him, he's a horrible carpenter. He's a horrible carpenter. He's a great, he's a great guy, horrible carpenter. But I often used to say he's such a horrible carpenter that he almost makes a great folk artist. And my brother Chris has kind of the same aesthetic. I'll show you on the, you know, he just makes stuff happen. His whole house is done that way. So, um, yeah, see, so there we go. We got a nice little box, right? Now, I have to definitely drill a hole in here at some point, but now we're going to do the top. So, anyways, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to put on a slope roof, and I did the same thing. I just glued this up real quick, cut it to fit. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hot glue, and I'm going to put it nice here. Again, I'm going to peg all this together later. So, anyways, now, that, while that's gluing, what I was thinking, i gotta, I got to close up these sides, right? But then, you know, I was actually kind of thinking about it. And um, I think they, I want to not use wood, so I'm going to use some uh, like rabbit cage type stuff. So that way the screening, you know, gets hot on the best neck with all the tar around. So the cool evening breeze can blow through the hole and come up and ventilate out. And if the birds want to close it up for, for warmth, they can do that with their own nesting materials. But I think the, I think the breeze will be good. So what I, I'm going to do is I'm going to, I cut up a bunch of this stuff here, it's just rabbit cage. But what, one thing you want to do is make sure that, try not to leave as, as many of these nippers on there. They can really hurt you. And then I was even thinking they might hurt the, the birds. So I'm going to nip these off, right? All right, so now I got a staple gun. I'll just put a couple staples in here. Hold it in place. We'll do the same to the other side. So, I think they're reacting to my stapling. They certainly sound like they are. And one more for the road. There we go. So that's pretty stable. I'm actually going to hammer those over. Right, so now we'll hammer those over and bend them over because I just like the look of it, you know, kind of haphazard. I want to do is I want to bring these up so they yeah that's probably a better one on the back side so what I'm going to just do is I'm going to shred, shred some of the loose bark because when I don't want to stick it out too much I want to cover it. yeah so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the hot glue gun and I really don't care if the glue shows because again I can do cool things with that later on aesthetically, you know, I can just sort of cover it with grasses and whatever. Most important that as I work fast and I don't think too much. Just kind of go with the flow. So we're going to flip that over on this side. I think I'll put... I think I'm going to put something across the front so a couple of them can sit at the same time. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, yeah, that one on there. Counter lever, can't lever. But I must lever, but I can't lever. Something like this, All right? And what I'll do is I'll do a little things like this that will hold that up. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool looking. Let's do that. Yeah, that's just gonna hold that there. Ow, ow, ow. Got to do. Glue it by that down there. Blueify, fortify, sanctify, mystify. <laughs> okay, so yeah, look at that. That's already looking kind of cool. And what I can also do is I can take some rope, maybe some fishing line that's plastic, and bind this all up, much the way you might see an old hatchet from, uh, you know, some old-fashioned habit hatchet when they wrapped it up with cat death to secure it to the stick. All right, so that's a little patience, kind of patience. Another one of these. Let's snap this sucker. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, look at that nice piece of wood, huh? Check that out, right? So we'll strip that off. Just knock off some of the the goobers, as we would call them. So you know, it's kind of cool. Check it out, right? Everything form follows function. Now that this stick is up here, and I want it to hold itself, when I go to put this as a vertical, I'm actually going to make these two go together somehow. Like, even that could be really kind of cool. Oh, yeah. See, check that out, right? So if I go like that, now we're talking. Now we're talking. All right. This is good. This is better than I thought. All right. So put a little glue there. And I'm going to let that dry nice. And then we'll put some glue up at the top. Because again, I, like I said, I'm going to wood glue this. I'm going to peg and dowel it with a drill bit. But all the glue allows you to work nice and quick. Where if you think too much, yeah. I mean, it's good to question. But at the same time, you kind of want to trust that instinct. You know, it's almost like the same instinct that you have just about with everything. Getting on an elevator, you know. Which dogs won't bite you. Sometimes there's an instinct with that stuff. So you trust your instincts when you're just dropping stuff down like this, when you're doing your thing. Don't be too cerebral about the whole thing that can come afterwards in reflection when you want to think about hey man i'm gonna do that again then you can start sort of evaluating process and stuff but first point especially as youngsters you want to just go with the flow right so i just turned this around got a little stand so it would make it easier so what i think i want to do first is i like this one because it has a perch a natural perch to it so i'm going to rest it up on here and again what i'm trying to do is make attachments that are Self that's uh, supporting the whole in, the whole structure itself, so they're almost like braces. I think this is another cool piece of wood. This one right here, I really like this. So we'll just hold that there for a few minutes. Let that cool. I have a couple pieces of bark that I want to put on here, so maybe we can do that. What we'll do is we'll. Put a couple strategic pieces of glue and I'll just press it where? Right there. Ta -da 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 -da, building the birdhouse. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that looks nice, huh? Little hidden tree bark there. Let's spin this around. Look at the other side. Yeah, this side needs some work. All right, so now we'll, we're going to get a little bit of bling going on here. I'm going to use that nail as a, as, a, as a support. I'll hook it on the nail somehow. All right, so the last thing I think I need to do is drill the hole. So I'm going to spin this around. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to drill the hole. And again, this is a keyless chuck, so you won't hurt yourself. See, I think right about there is good. <laughs> there we go. So now, I've got to make a perch. Something like this. Something like that. So we're going to snap that off. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so now I need another drill. All right, let's see. We'll put the perch right there. All right. Now, we're going to have to whittle it away. Well, this won't fit in that hole, obviously, so. Now, notice, how, how again, keeping my arms in, my body, so I don't get hurt, right? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peg and I'm gonna wood glue things together. And then I'm also gonna peg things together now. In order to do that, it's gonna take a lot of drilling. So I'm gonna tr tr trade out my drill bit. We'll try this drill bit. It might be a little bit more slow than I, than I want it, but we'll see. I'm gonna come right in here. 
Perfect, perfect. Slide the peg in. Yeah, that's nice and snug. That's the size. And snap it off. So I'll drill a few more of these holes. Take my little dowel, my shish kebab stick, snap it off. Bang. Hey, you know, this is the time of year to start thinking about, you know, what this beautiful environment will offer us. I would really encourage you all to get out in nature, to breathe the good air. You know, be good. Go clean your room. Be a good steward. I can't wait to bring this to the basket neck and mount it on the side of my house. All right, hey, God bless you guys. I'll see you soon back at the ranch. And um, watch my videos. And uh, thumb up, subscribe if you can. I'm not too sure if you can comment because it's a school dealio if you're doing your school email. So that's, that's okay. But let me know what you think. Um, I'd love to see pictures of what you guys are making. I think that's really important for us to, you know. So I thought out of this series of videos I'll do, I'm just going to give you incredibly practical things that could be fun, that could be um, exciting to do, easy to do. Um, again, I'd love to, you know, do things that represent the stewardship of the environment with upcycling. So here we're upcycling, and um, I just can't wait to see the birds that will nest in it. Oh, actually, you know, it's really kind of cool is uh, on the Bearskin Neck, right above one of my outdoor speakers. The birds have been nesting in that little area. Oh gosh, six years I've seen them there. All the little babies, they sit on our door and then they fly away. But every year, birds come back. We missed one year where they didn't come back, but then they did and they're back again. But it'll be nice to see this on the down in my alley. All right, peace, love, dove. Take care, love you guys.